We want to see you all over on YouTube, so check us out at Backyard Gardens TV to watch our podcasts and other gardening videos. Now that you've planned for after the harvest and you've harvested for after the harvest, now we need to talk about consuming, cooking, and preserving our harvest. This is it. This is the after the harvest part. We're finally there. (laughs) It's officially after. Right here on the Backyard Gardens podcast. To have a good harvest, one must plant good seeds and must also use the right kind of fertilizer. The carrots have grown large and firm. How good they will taste. Welcome to the Backyard Gardens podcast, where we talk about all things gardening. We are your host, Ben and Batavia, and you can find me gardening in the country. And you'll find me gardening in the city. Get ready as we dig deep into this wonderful world of gardening where we learn to grow and grow for change. All right, everybody, if you would like to support the show, check us out on Patreon. Link is below. You will get two extra episodes a month. You can have input on the shows. We put polls out. We talk to you guys. We answer questions, all that stuff. So please join us there. And easily enough, You can just watch us on YouTube. Check out Backyard Gardens TV. Our Tuesday episodes go up there, and we have a whole bunch of other episodes up there of different tips and tricks and how to grows and all that good stuff. So just give us a like and subscribe. And hey, leave us a comment. Whatever you want, within reason. (laughs) Um, Yeah, so this this episode... It goes in line with the others. So we've talked about planning our garden for after the harvest with that in mind. We've talked about harvesting, when to harvest, different times, techniques, stuff like that, along with a little bit of chit chat, of course. (laughs) And then now we're going to talk about the act of preserving and cooking, consuming our, our produce after the harvest. Fair enough? Fair enough. Fair enough. So... When we think about this, Batavia, what what's the first thing that comes to your mind? The Set first the stage. thing is there are two people that when they say my name, I feel like I come to attention. It's like, wait, hold on. You're one <laughs> of them. And there's a, a gentleman that I work with. It's like, for whatever reason, the way that my name comes out of your mouth, I'm like, I should be paying attention here. Um, <laughs> 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 there's also, there, there's it's endearing when you both say it as well. Yeah, both of you guys are good guys. But anyway, um, the first thing in the immediate that comes to mind and not kind of like my full plan of things, it really is the August challenge last year, August 2021. And it's because I have grown a garden for so many years where I just I'm looking for a dash of this, a dash of that. And last August was the first time that I kind of put, you know, kind of pen to paper and put the thing in action and say it your plate needs to be from your garden your full plate needs to be from your garden right and so when i think about even planning this year's garden a little bit i'll be frank a little bit of planning went into you know okay can i make a plate of food out of this just a tinge but when i was actually planting my garden i started to think about that even more like when these things are are harvested kind of what to make of them um and i think the answer you're looking for and it's the shortest answer is i do think a lot about preserving when it comes to what happens after the harvest yeah i do too and i think it's i almost think that at some point in a gardener's life it becomes inevitable that at some point you will start to think about preserving some way mm-hmm. be it drying freezing canning whatever and I, I think it's natural and it's an urge that we have in order to continue to enjoy the garden but that's not all this episode's about too because we're talking about consuming the garden so you've planned all the way up until this point and now it's time to put our money where our mouth is you know it's time for us to figure out what are we going to do to enjoy this Mm -hmm. you know Mm -hmm. um a lot of people you know well it, it seems like we always start off with tomatoes but like in my family a lot of people start tomatoes for tomato sandwich that's like the only reason they grow them you know what I mean? And what ends up happening 
is they get tired of eating the tomato sandwiches Mm -hmm. and the extra produce is, and even though this is a good way to use it, is given away. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But it doesn't have to be given away because if we go back to our previous series that we did, we need to also be holding some back for the future, right? We need to be setting up that secure part for us, that food security for us. And that's something that we can do if we just think outside the box a little bit with some of our produce. Is that fair enough to say? Yeah, it is. I mean, I think this is probably six, seven years ago. I was a classic. I wanted tomatoes to add them to my salad. I wanted tomatoes for a tomato sandwich. And I could eat salad all year long, you know, but then it was like, well, sure, I got to go buy the lettuce from the store because lettuce isn't growing in my garden anymore. But then I, the tomato sandwiches is kind of like, no more mayo. Like, I can't, you know, enough already. Um, so I've been there and that, you know, among other things led me to, there's much more you can do. Because back then, I wasn't growing enough to make like some big hauls of, of tomato sauce. Right. You know, and so there is a you kind of have to amp things up depending on what you want to do with it. Um, I do think, though, it's it's okay to plan your garden, plan your harvesting, do your harvest in a way where you're saying, I want to make this last. And that's, you know, that's kind of synonymous with preserving for me, you know. Yeah, and it it's another it it changes the complete profile taste profile of your food too. I mean, mm. you now have unlocked different ways and different recipes in order to use all of this. So, um I do I would be remiss to say that if you're interested in preserving and you don't know what to get, the Amazon link below will have all of the products, cookbooks and stuff that we have used and tested over the years. If you do that, it will also help out the show. I mean, it's like pennies, but it will help out the show. So, you know, you can check that out and see what canners we use and all that good stuff. Mm -hmm. But it's definitely a way to kind of unlock the potential of your garden. And I think, honestly, it takes it to a whole new level. I mean, well, I, I absolutely agree. But again, transparency Um, And it's all about how small or how large you start. It's a different uh, layer of work as well, period. It is. It it definitely is. And there needs to be a level of enjoyment that comes out of it in order to keep you consistent with it. So at this point now, I believe in in, in Batavia's world, this is the third year that she's thought about pressure canning. (laughs) <laughs> so I think this is going to be the year that she actually sets the water bath aside and starts to pressure can. I think this is it. Now this may be we may have to extend it a year, but am I right or am I wrong? There's nothing worse than someone that knows you so well and then <laughs> brings up something that you like I'm not ready to know myself in that way. You know what though, in all seriousness, like you know, all BS aside, this has to be the year. And you know why? Because we talked about last episode how we both have vegetables that we're trying out we're learning to grow because we would rather learn to grow them now right kind of get the kinks out and then decide that's going to be something kind of in our forever gardens and our future gardens we don't want to have to go up against a bunch of fails because these are the first time out when we're in a different state in the world right you know so this throws back to our previous series before this one um, so I say that to say, like, I don't want to be going through a whole bunch of trial and error for the first time, you know, two years from now when it re- related right. to pressure canning. So I, I kind of I can't really talk out of both sides of my butt in that, you know, so I, I got to basically jump on this wagon here. Well, and and so um, my hat's off to you, Batavia, because you definitely take your time, do your <laughs> research and, you know, it thoroughly before you get started. But with that being said. We're going to go to a break and then we're going to come back and we're going to unpack this whole consumption of our harvest, our preserving and cooking and all that. So we'll be right back. 
Hey, everybody. Thanks for checking out the Backyard Gardens podcast. If you like what we're doing and you want to continue to support the podcast, head over to our Patreon page to sign up. You can also make a one-time donation using PayPal. Both of these links are in the description. With your support, we can continue growing and helping others in their gardens. See ya. We want everybody to have a garden, and we're going to give you a chance to win free seeds every month. Head over to BackyardGardensTV.com and enter your email address to be entered in all of our giveaways. Good luck. Okay, I say we start from the bottom and work our way up. What do you think? Um, I'll Sure, why don't you go ahead and start from the bottom? Okay. I'm going to pose a question to the listeners. Had, no, to the listeners, not you. Have you tried to eat your produce raw? That's the question. There's a lot of it that we think can be needs to be cooked and reality does not need to be cooked. You Agreed. know what I'm saying? So, <clears throat> can I give you an example? Yeah, I'm just so glad this is their question and not mine. <laughs> yeah, no. How many times have you gone to a party and you've seen a vegetable tray? I'm going to say almost at every party. Right. And how many times have you looked in that vegetable tray and the broccoli's the last man standing? <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's picked around it. They've eaten everything, you know. I mean, it, there's always, what, broccoli, carrots. No, broccoli and celery are the things. because Celery, yeah. Because celery could be refreshing or it could be stringy as heck. And yeah. Like <laughs> So, and there's always like a tub of blue cheese or ranch in the middle, right? But have you tried to eat the broccoli raw? It's not that bad. No, I think the way that they cut broccoli and vegetable trays just makes it, it's not as tasty. Um, Because I absolutely do. I prefer it like just a little bit cooked if I'm going to, you know, a little bit cooked to a lot cooked. Uh, But if it's fresh, it needs to be kind of thinly sliced. Not, not, don't think like radish, but pretty close to it. So this year I was out in my garden and my broccoli was starting to bolt Mm -hmm. and I was pissed. You know, I was like, damn, I didn't even get a head of broccoli this year at all in the spring. Mm -hmm. So I I cut it. I went over to the compost pile and it hadn't actually totally bolted yet. It was a very small head that was clearly it was starting Mm -hmm. to separate. You know, it, it was done. And a lot of times what I'll do is um, when my broccoli, if I have a bigger head and it starts to separate, I'll actually harvest it and I'll cut the florets off, you know, and mix it in with eggs or something. Mm -hmm, And it's really big, but it just wasn't very big. So I just ate it right there in the garden. And it was the first time I had done that. And I was like, you know what? This is not that bad. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's not. So then I went to a party and I ate the broccoli. I was the only, I was killing the broccoli. (laughs) I was eating it. But it's one of those things, you know, and it's like zucchini, you know, that's another one. So growing up, my mom, God bless her soul, she would always make uh, squash, zucchini and onions and she would like pan fry it or whatever, Mm -hmm, saute it, whatever mm -hmm. you want to call it. And it was okay. But then as I got older, I went to where did I, I went to a Whole Foods and we were vegan at the time and so you know they have the the food bar there mm-hmm. and they had a raw broccoli salad or not broccoli zucchini salad there where they had spiralized it it was delicious so mm-hmm. we ended up getting a spiralizer and eat and we now we eat zucchini via a spiralizer raw um, we actually did an episode of that on the backyard kitchen available on Tubi and Tellus everywhere. So, um, you can check that out, but we did that and it's changed the way that we've looked at that vegetable forever. Mm-hmm, it's mm-hmm. now given us another way to eat it. So where I grew up and I only ate it one way, then I had one year where it grew out of my compost pile as another a volunteer and I got a zucchini that was like you know, two feet long and I made like 15 zucchini breads. (laughs) So then we have that way. Then we have, um, I, I used an example previously about somebody who put it in chili. So then we put it in chili sometimes. Mm -hmm. Now we also eat it raw. So now we have this very versatile vegetable that originally was not versatile. Only if summer squash could be the same way, may I add, but it's not. 
How, how tired do you get of eating summer squash when you actually get it to grow? I, I think that um, well, it's been so many years since I've been able to get it to grow. But when I was able to, to grow it, I wasn't aware of the number of options I had. So right. I got sick of it really, really quickly. I think it was more of a novelty. Like, look at, oh my gosh, this plant is huge. These, this, this zucchini is huge. I mentioned this previously in a recent episode, the video or the picture where I have the zucchini is from the size from my elbow to my fingertips. Yep. And I was just like, badass, look at this. And then, then I cut it open and tasted it. And I'm like, bad you know <laughs> yeah um, so so yeah i've learned some things as an example for zucchini uh, when to harvest it from a size standpoint to make it more enjoyable and those different um you know methods of, of cooking it or eating it i think the spiralized thing oh it was such the rave a few years back like probably like five years back and you know the only note i have around that because i enjoy it as well it's light and it's fresh but it's going to depend on what you what the sauce is for that what the dressing is for that Um, and you should actually so it's funny in that episode not only did we make a sauce with it but as we were making it i and this you're gonna hate me for what i'm about to say we ate it. I was like, something's missing. And so we were like, let's go to the herb garden now Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and cut different herbs and see which one we can pair with it to work. And so we can, you know, we moved on and started adding that to it. And we actually found a combination that worked very well. I'm not going to tell you what it is. You're obviously going to need to watch the episode on Tubi, clearly. Mm -hmm. But it was another one of those things where we could add to it and we figured out like, oh, this is really good. But it's like you said, the reason why we like it is because it is very light Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. it is a very good summertime dish because sometimes you don't want something heavy. You know, we again, if we talk about chili, like the last thing I want in the middle of summer is a bowl of chili. I know you beg to differ, but Mm -hmm. it's just not the same. Even if you are a meat eater, right? You know, there's some ways we have some sides even during summer that, again, are a bit heavier. You know, so there's nothing wrong. I think the first time that I had, remember the grilled lettuce? I'm pretty yeah. sure it was with like a bit cut cut of meat, like a steak or something, you know, like it's I'm not trying to say that that's a balanced meal by any means, <laughs> but I'm trying to say that at some point um, you want different textures. At some point you want kind of something that's just different on your tongue. And I think that, you know, sometimes eating these vegetables uh, fresh, raw really can do that for you. Right. And and so, you know, a lot of people eat tomatoes raw. Mm-hmm. So let's flip the script on that and say, have you tried to cook your tomatoes? Mm-hmm. Sure. Yep. I'm not you, but just oh. in general. Like, have you ever tried to cook your tomatoes, you know, or your green beans, for example? You know, what's one of the big things that I think about? And, you know, Batavia brought this up before we, we smashed the record button was... <laughs> When we when we cook our green beans, how do we expect to eat those green beans? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, you don't have to eat a big pile of green beans. Mm-hmm. You can mix them in with your food and you can take multiple vegetables from your harvest and mix them all in and have a delicious meal that consists of all these different vegetables. And that solely for me, that came out of the August challenge last year, Mm -hmm. which at the time of this recording, we're probably doing again. So if you want to join us, if you want to put a rule on it, the rule would be eat lunches out of your garden and only your garden. No, because the rule is eat one meal out of your garden. Remember, we modified. Oh, that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. One meal. One meal. <laughs> Excuse me. So, you know, if you if you want to join us on on that task and I, you know, we spent a lot of time talking about it. What? No, I just had a aha moment. Go oh, okay. On. We spent a lot of time talking about it. And when it came down to it, it was literally, literally the most valuable thing I did in my garden last year. Mm-hmm. It mm-hmm. opened my eyes to so many things that is honestly, I would say created up to this point this year, 80% of the shows that we've done, that concept, that test came out of, I would would say it's been a big driver for what we've done and has also expanded 
the way I look at food just by doing what I just talked about, where I was harvesting out of my garden. I would go out to my garden and I would say, okay, what can I eat for lunch today? Okay. I have one pepper. I have one jalapeno. I've got two eggs. I've got, you know, a handful of green beans. Let me see what I can do and, you know, go get some herbs and mix them together. And it was good. Now, you know, it's the whole, you know, vegans favorite meal stir fry debate. <laughs> like, you know, how old does it get? But at the same time, like it, it was delicious. Yeah. The, um, the benefit and. I know you, again, if you're a long time listener, you know that I will throw anything in a salad, but green beans, back to that example, that's a great way to use like not even quite a handful of green beans. You know, yeah. you, I would basically like lightly pan fry them. You know, they still have that bright green color, cut them up and add it. And that's a different type of salad that I'm making. Right. But that's a salad that I'm making, you know, and sometimes a salad doesn't even have lettuce. I always wanted to have lettuce, but sometimes the garden doesn't provide that. You could add it to some chard if you want the leafy green in there. I think that one of the things um, that I I've planned to do this year um, is try to and it's it maybe started before, but it definitely was brought home with August challenge. You really have to be okay and comfortable with accepting what's non-traditional when it comes to what's on your plate. Right. You know, so we are this isn't top chef. We're not trying to prepare it for, you know, for these guest judges. It's not that right. Like we want nutritious food. We want good tasting food. Um, We want something that's, you know, appealing to the eye, which could just be some color. It doesn't have to be kind of prim and proper on the plate. I think that, you know, if you're eating three meals a day times X number of days, that's a lot of work to get some real good me- looking meals, right? That's not how it works. That's not how life is. Mm-hmm. You know? And so I think that um, when it comes to our garden, we have to take advantage of that as well. Like if I had my stove in the supermarket, what would I do? Right. You know, like what would I be making? Right. And so my You'd be stove- taking some ibuprofen because your back would be hurting. <laughs> <laughs> my my stove is just a a, hand, a walk away from my garden, right? Like yeah. you kind of have to start thinking about um, the ways that you can enjoy this this these vegetables and these fruits that you may be pulling from your garden, and sometimes they come together in non traditional ways. I guess is is what I really want to come across, and that's okay, right? Like, is if does it taste good? Is it good for you? Rock yeah. with it. Yeah, go with it. And I mean, that's the thing is when you you talk about the cooking and the consuming of it, be it raw or cooking, it's thinking outside the box and try something new. Don't just grow your tomatoes for the tomato sandwich. Grow them for fried green tomatoes. Grow them for the tomato sandwich. Grow them for a sauteed tomato. Why don't you make a pizza and slice them and put mm-hmm. it on there? You know, do stuff like that. And it just it changes the way that we can, you know, enjoy these things after the harvest because there's some uh, dehydrated. I haven't figured out the full on sun dried tomato, but I've done dehydrated tomatoes for cherry tomatoes before. Added some oil to it. I mean, that's some good stuff. I. I always say we've said this before, or we mentioned this before, because there's always the, the, this is not the first time you'll hear this. Some of these things are themes. If you're thinking about a new vegetable that you're, if it's not like a cucumelon that you just want to grow because you're interested in growing them, shout out to you, but you want to try something new, think about a couple of ways that you can consume it. Right. And if you yeah. can get to a couple of ways you can consume it, then rock and roll with it. You know? Yeah. I mean, look at cucumbers, for example. Cucumbers are another good one where, Traditionally, like I grew cucumbers and you just put them in a salad Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then we took them and we sliced them. We put a little bit of salt and pepper on them and ate them with our dinners. Mm -hmm. Then we soaked them in Italian dressing and ate them. Mm -hmm. Then we put then we just moved on to vinegar and salt. Then as we started the episode, I naturally moved into making pickles Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then that was the big okay. So we took our garden plan. And we said, okay, we want to make pickles. What do we do? How do we make these pickles, you know, enough for us to enjoy them throughout the year? And well, we wanted to grow more of those because mm-hmm. we like them. And so that moves us into this whole preserving aspect of it because you can take something as mundane as a cucumber 
And now you can add whatever you want to it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You can add garlic. You can add dill, sugar. You know, you can put a jalapeno in there, make them hot. You can do all these different things. And now you've got this different flavor profiles, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, same with tomatoes, canning tomatoes. Okay. We grow a lot of tomatoes specifically for canning because we want to enjoy them in multiple ways. So we can them whole, we can them chopped, we can Mm -hmm. them as salsa, we can them for um, spaghetti sauce, pizza sauce. You know, now we've taken something and not only are we eating it in the ways that we had described before, but we are totally transforming this to something new. So basically... What we're doing is we're saying, ragu, you can go to hell. <laughs> we got this. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And we're moving on. You know, we've so is all these different ways that you can do it. And, and the list goes on and on. And dipping your toe into preserving is as simple as cutting your basil and letting it dry on your counter and putting it in a jar. Yep. That's as simple as it is. Yep. It doesn't, I mean, you know, there's not much more to it. I think that um, there is this idea of when I go to the garden and when you look at things that um, can be prolific, right? So it's going to put on a lot of whatever it's growing for you, then it's such a prime candidate for um, preserving, right? Like I, my broccoli this spring, my dream was to grow so much of it that I could blanch it and freeze some of it, but that wasn't my reality. Right. Um, so I knew my plan for that was just going to be to cook it, you know, but my, some of my other greens, we dang sure I'm going to cook it and eat it, you know, as a meal, but I'm also going to preserve it. Right. And so that's a way that I make a distinction between kind of what I want to eat fresh and what I want to preserve. There's no way that I'm growing as many peppers as I'm growing without preserving. Right. Like, like, it's just not going to happen, you know, especially with how long some of the peppers take to produce, you know, in my area when it comes to, you know, how long the season is. I'm getting a lot of my peppers like in the September time period, you know, in the the last of the October time period or I should say in the October time period. And there's no way I'm going to eat. I mean, I guess I could give away as much as I want, but there's no way I'm going to eat all of those fresh. And so a part of my plan is for after the harvest is for me to preserve them, you know, although I'm really, I'm, I'm trying to figure out peppers in my garden. There's something, I think they are probably more problematic than tomatoes are as far as quantity, but we can address that in a, in a different episode. We can. And I think that, um, you know, for us, we eat our peppers fresh mainly. And that's because I haven't found out the way that I want to preserve them. I mean, we do take our peppers and we make a pepper jelly out of them for cornbread. So there is that method. Um, you cut them up I, and freeze them. You know, that's one of the yeah, big ways too. Yeah. And that's something that I don't get too deep in anymore because we can so much as freezing. And I, I would like to get back into it a little bit more. Um, and that's something that you can do easily too is freezing. I mean, a lot of things can just be cut and stuck in a freezer bag and frozen, you know. And you know how and you can figure out what could freeze well, what versus what doesn't? How? Go to the grocery store in the freezer section. Yeah. You can. And I mean that and that's the thing is we we talked about on the last episode, like you can do all the research in the world, but I, I don't think I know I didn't understand for a long time. And once I unlocked it, it really helped that the grocery store is a great resource. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's an amazing resource. You know, I take like I have a gallon bag and whenever I get my peas and I, I shell them, I just stick them in there and stick them right in the freezer. That's it. Nothing else. It's I mean, it's just and when I need to do it again, I pull out that same bag. I open it up and I shell right into there. And I put them right back into the freezer. So there are these ways to, you know, preserve. And that once I did that, that is why that is the sole reason why my garden is as big as it is because of preserving, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, and if it was up to me, I mean, I'd run a backhoe and start tearing up the backyard (laughs) and, you know, that would be all she wrote backyard garden. Hell, it'd be backyard farming at that point, (laughs) but we're not quite there yet. 
But, you know, another thing that and I don't think people really understand is if you've ever grown garlic, mm. you're it's preserving because you're drying it. You know what I mean? It's naturally that way. You know what I mean? Like you're already preserving. You don't even realize it. Would you say the same about I don't know if I'm ready to jump on that bandwagon, but which you, okay. you would say the same thing about onions, too, then. Yeah. Yeah. You could say the same thing about onions. I mean, you know. Right off the bat, you're pres- now. I feel like it's a natural thing for people to grow garlic before they grow onions. But that could be. I could be way off on that. For me, that's how it was. I would just. It was natural. Like I put the garlic, you know, the garlic bulb in there, and boom, I got garlic. I think I by far consume more onions than I do garlic. Um, you know, when it comes to cooking and all, um, and then I think that. Um, Onions seem to be this is this year. I by now I have my my garlic harvest and more to come on that. Um, but onions are it's like a code to crack, you know. Yeah, I haven't mastered onions yet, but I've also I'm like a year and a half in. I'm gonna give last year just a half a year. <laughs> I'm only a year and a half in on that. So this year I plan to kind of step up the game a little bit. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um. But yeah, it's all, you know, within reason. You you know, I'm thinking about, I think we do eat more onions than we do garlic because onions seem to go in everything. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But I know whenever things calls for a clove of garlic, we always put five in. So there's <laughs> that too. Yeah, I think, you know, but I want to say that maybe garlic keeps longer. I mean, for us that don't have a root cellar. So everyone else, you know, that doesn't have a root cellar, garlic probably keeps better than onions. There's more more moisture in onions than garlic. Yeah, I can agree. I could go on board with that. I so definitely I, have onions rot a lot faster than yeah. garlic. So I bring it up because we talk about like from a preservation standpoint, there's kind of that short term preserving. So what like, you know, you're not preserving a, a head of cabbage. However, there is a much longer shelf life on a head of cabbage in your fridge. You know, then yeah. there are some other vegetables. Right. Um, and so when you look at something like, you know, onions or garlic as an, as an example. And so if you're listening to this episode and you plan on ordering garlic online, you need to be doing it like yesterday like you know start yeah. searching because those things basically sell out and once they're sold out for the season that's it it's my hope that i'll be able to just replant some of what i harvested this year so we'll see um, well that's why i grew grocery store garlic last year i had no choice mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. the jury's still out i'm um, getting at the time of the recording you you should probably be able to find the outcome of this mm-hmm. but I should be getting very close to harvesting my grocery store garlic. And I sincerely, from the bottom of my heart, hope that it's the right thing to do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I hope I did not make a mistake, but I didn't have a choice. It was either that or no garlic at all. So what's the problem, you know? Yeah. And that also, it kind of maps back to some of the things that we've talked about in this previous series, right? Like everything, you can't do everything exactly right now for the forever. And I get that. Um, but the garlic, if you, if it works out for you, then you won't have to purchase garlic next year. But if it doesn't work out for you, my guess is you're going to be placing an order for garlic. So you can basically get some garlic that's going to be growing in your your garden kind of this year and then harvesting next year. Because, again, you want you don't want to continue to have to buy that every year if you could help it. Right. That's that's one of the yeah. beauties in it. You know, potatoes. Well, are, see, and that's how I. Go ahead. I was just going to say potatoes, white potatoes, which I'm going to say whatever the skin color is. It's I'm going to call it a white potato. Um, it's a little bit more tricky because depending on the window of time you have, some people are able to hold on to some of those seed potatoes and others like until the next time they're planting, others aren't um, or hold on to some of their harvest to use it as seed potatoes, I should say. Um, sweet potatoes. I tried that and my slips. I can't rule it out, but my slips just struggle so much. So I had to go a different route. I purchased some slips um, to plant in my garden this year. Um, But I said all of that to say there are things that we're doing when it comes to preserving these foods um, that allow us to continue to build upon it from our gardens. Yeah. Or in our gardens. I want to say if you hear my dog barking, it is because it is summer vacation and somebody's ringing my doorbell constantly. So 
I really need to get one of those ring situations. Mm-hmm. So I'd be like, go away. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, so for me, this was the first year that I did my own sweet potato slips. And I, what I ended up doing was I got the slip started on potato. Then I just buried the potato hole. And it's going to be one of those things where either I get potatoes or I don't. And I'm okay with that. Uh, yeah. Because it's my anticipation was each year to use the potatoes from the previous year mm-hmm. in order to grow them. So I essentially took my gardening budget by buying my potato, my sweet potatoes and my garlic the way I did. And I sliced off like $80 off of my you know, my overall gardening budget, which is nothing to shake a stick at. No, not at all. May I add. And I mean, now, you weren't spending $80 on sweet potato slips. Between sweet potato slips and ordering garlic, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yes, mm-hmm, it would be mm-hmm. about 80 bucks. Sweet potato slips are not cheap. Mm-hmm. No, 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 no. I've ordered them online as well. Yeah. Um, so, I think that, fortunately, this excites me so much. I'm trying to, to rein it in. Um, I think the idea of growing something in your garden in this year and then being able to continue to use it. It's what garden dreams are made of. It's what farming dreams are made of. Um, I have had success with growing. Um, and I only say this because this is what, what my intention was. I've purchased organic potatoes from the store. They end up, uh, the sprouts end up popping up on them at some point, And then I end up planting them. Now, I don't know if the seed potatoes you may purchase if they're producing a larger yield than these store-bought potatoes, but I have had store-bought potato spuds produce multiple potatoes. So that has worked for me. And I share it with you all because it's worked for me. Um, I always hear not to do that too. I hear not to do it only for the reason of the inhibitors that um, are put onto those potatoes that don't lead them to sprout. That's the reason. That's one of the recommendations. Um, And that's just not been my story. Now, well, as gonna, a matter of fact, I didn't buy russet potatoes in 2021. I used store-bought potatoes. Guess what returned this year? Those store-bought russet potatoes. I left it. I accidentally, when I harvested mine from last year, I left a couple in the ground, didn't realize it. Now, I haven't harvested them this year yet, but I mean, I've already gotten one year's potatoes out of it. We ain't feeding an army. You know? <laughs> like, but again, one thing produced many. I mean, come on. So I'm going to take that to heart. And I think that from now on, I may start utilizing the grocery store a lot more to get my seed. I know people that start bean seeds from the beans Mm -hmm, from the grocery mm -hmm. store. So I don't see a problem with it. But we've we've digressed just a little bit. So let's get back. (laughs) Let's get back to um, the preserve. But, you know, we really haven't because. That's part of the after the harvest thing, and it kind of bleeds into the next episode a little bit, but it's using it multiple ways. So we're eating it, and then you're you're growing for the next year off of it. And that, in turn, feeds back into the sustainable gardening series that we did, because that's all the sustainable part, is now you are becoming a more sustainable (laughs) gardener. So last year when I did my garlic, I I think I purchased six bulbs and ended up putting two and a half in. So of all the ones I did, if I could keep six bulbs mm-hmm. out of it, then I'm and plant all of them, then I'm moving in the right direction. You know, and each year I grow more and more and more because the goal is to have enough to go through the year. Mm-hmm. Now, I since I'm talking about garlic, I do want to say that, you know, we all chop up garlic and put it in our food and stuff like that. But have you ever just taken garlic and put it in the oven and softened it and eaten it straight up? No, I've seen a lot of people post about that, too. It's amazing. It's amazing. And it's just another way to use these things. So it's like broadening your horizons and using it is... I haven't tried canning garlic yet. Like, just canning cloves of garlic. I don't know how I feel about that. It's definitely not ruled out of my future, but I have to have enough garlic to, you know, potentially waste a jar of garlic. I'm going to try. I know you're not the biggest fan of it because there's always the idea of like what happens if electricity goes out. But I've seen people like kind of with the hacks of like, you know, buying, buying a lot of food and how to, you know, kind of bulk buying, I guess is the term. 
And I'm pretty certain I've seen someone in like one of those carry out plastic containers that just have cloves of garlic frozen in there. And so in my mind, like when it thaws, it seems like it'd be mushy. But when you think about what you're adding it to, in a lot of cases, I don't know if it matters much. So I'm going to try a small container, hopefully with my humongous garlic harvest and see kind of how it is. And that's a a part of the same thing I do in the garden, right? You want to try different methods and see what works for you. Um, I am on board and I'm going to preserve some green beans if my harvest allows it. But I'm also going to freeze a couple to see again, once these things come out and I'm ready to eat them, which do I prefer? It may be that I never want to freeze green beans again. I only want to preserve them using a pressure canner. You know what got me into pressure canning? My son, when he was born and it was time for him to move to solid foods, we had a lot of green beans Mm -hmm. and we wanted to eat them. So we pressure can them. So we, so, you know, I've said before, but the first solid food he ate was green beans from our garden and he loved them. So we continued to do it. And that's what really pushed us into the pressure canning portion. And I mean, I can, I can remember clear as day, like the first day I was like, Oh God, it's going to explode. It's just a huge (laughs) bomb, you know, and it didn't. And I've never had one blow up on me. You know, new technology has occurred and they are a little bit safer than they used to be. But green beans are another one that is paramount in this discussion because a fresh green bean from a cooked green bean mm-hmm. to a canned green bean has totally three totally different flavors. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Totally different. Not only that, but we also, and I've said this recently and I'm going to say it again, we can our green beans in different sizes. We can them in dinner sizes and we can them in green bean casserole sizes. So the bigger, larger cans are for green bean casserole and we'll cook that and freeze that as well. So if you have a cabinet with shelves with food on it, if you have um, a freezer with uh, food in it, so these are all storage methods you have already applied the idea of different serving sizes and different container sizes. If you're purchasing canned foods or jars, you've already figured out what works for you and your family. And so this is a great opportunity to be able to apply it. The recipe that I gave last week, um, I'm just going to say the sauce, I have it in two different sizes similarly right when i freeze my pesto i freeze it in two different sizes if i have enough of it like it could be a four ounce jar or an eight ounce jar four ounce jar is just going to go on some bread yeah now because that's how i roll right and an eight ounce jar is going to be for a single serving meal you know maybe two servings of a meal you know um so these things i mean you don't have to be dependent on kind of what the 32 ounce tomato sauce you know versus whatever else they're selling at the store um that's also the beauty in when you start um growing and then preserving your own food you can make it just right for you and yours exactly and you can do it based on your family's needs and desires Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so that's really crucial and i mean we go every year so we grow our own strawberries, but we just get enough to like snack on because we're not really trying to be like strawberry like producers. Mm-hmm. But we go to a local farm and we pick our own strawberries and we pick enough to make enough jelly for the year. Every year. Making jelly is an excellent way to start the canning process for you because one, you don't I mean, I don't even have you have one of those like um big water bath canners Mm -hmm. like legit water bath canners see i don't i have a five dollar pot that i got from (laughs) like dollar general the just a big pot that i use and i've used it for years now i've always threatened to buy a legit water bath canner but i've just i don't need it so there's no cost needed for that you know what i mean it's the all you need are the jars and a little bit of pectin and the recipe is on the pectin you know what I mean? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So there's always that. Now, which, by the way, pectin went up like 300% this oh, year, wow. just so you know. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. But, um, you know, as we go through, like freezing is such a good way because not only do you have to, can you freeze the actual vegetable, but you can cook it in a dish and freeze the dish. So, you know, lasagnas, stuff like that. If you want to break down that that dish most of the vegetables that are put in there can easily come out of your garden. 
There's know. um and there's something to be said about the timing of it. So there's I mean meal prep is a whole genre, you know, when it comes to like YouTube as an example, right? Like that's a whole thing in blogs and all of that. And um while you may not do the whole Monday through Friday meal prep, but preparing a meal and putting it in a freezer, it it's such a convenience, you know. Um the dish that the sauce that I made, I had it with some um stuffed like pasta shells and it was store-bought don't don't get it twisted you know but i pulled them out of the freezer added my sauce and i was off to the races um but if i were to stop and say i can make this dish myself or a dish similar to it prepare it freeze it you know you're good to go this is um there is remember you asked if there's anything more joyous than harvesting your food and i said that a seedling from the garden and i said that the seedling emerging from the soil is a second best i'm actually gonna like it's like a runner-up i'm actually gonna take that back taking something off of a shelf or out of the freezer uh that i have preserved is probably right next to harvesting when it comes to satisfaction yeah um as a gardener We've had a couple meals in the middle of winter this year um, that came completely out of the garden Mm -hmm. from either, you know, I will say and I will admit that, yes, my garden is a little bit different than a lot of people where I can grow, you know, turnips and stuff throughout the winter. But not only was there like one of those or something in there, but there was like the tomato sauce, the pesto, all that stuff, the sweet potato, all that came out of our garden and we were able to eat it in the middle of winter have a complete dish you know i think it was even we even had fish that night and i had caught the fish and frozen it so there was that um now i will you know we talked about broadening your horizons one thing i want to say about that is carrots so a big thing for me was i grew a lot of carrots last year and i realized that I didn't want to eat just raw carrots, which, by the way, if I can add, it is my recipe of the day, but I'm just going to tell you, carrots with some spicy mustard as a snack is delish. Hmm. Hmm. So, but what we did is then I took it a step further and I canned the carrots. I just sliced them and canned them. And we ended up making maple carrots with it, like maple glazed carrots. So, that's, you know, that was another way that we could enjoy it. And just by broadening our horizon, now we say, okay, making our garden plan moving forward, we're going to plan to grow X amount more carrots for the sole purpose of canning them to enjoy them throughout the year. I'm stuck because I don't feel like I'm a creative cook, right? And that's okay. I mean, I have talents and that's not one of them. But when you said spicy, like some mustard, did you say spicy mustard or just mustard? I mean, you could do whatever, right. but so I like mustard spicy and mustard. Some carrots. There's this uh, spicy mustard honey kind of um, marinade that I make a few times a year. It's just it's it's great on everything. And I was just thinking to myself, I never add it to like as a part of like vegetables. Like I, if I have something roasted, like it's some you know like a main dish, and I maybe I'll use it to add to chicken or something. And then if I have some like. Um, like roasted broccoli i may end up dipping it into that sauce but i am now on the search i wonder if i use that to marinate the carrots i feel like i could taste that i think i just may have broken through like i may be on youtube now and on instagram as like be better garden the chef i feel like i'm I feel like this is the beginning. <laughs> Can we hear a guest spot on uh, Backyard Kitchen? Yeah, man. Uh, I'm going to try it. But, you know, if you guys don't hear the recipe of the day at some point in the next couple of months, it was a bust. So <laughs> yeah. I'm going to keep my day job as a gardener. <laughs> Complete disclaimer right there. You heard it first right here on the Backyard Gardens <laughs> podcast, folks. So it's it's really about. It's really about getting out of your comfort zone. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And we've, we've talked about this before, how like people's eating habits is generally comfort. We, mm-hmm. uh, we rotate through the same Ease. meals. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And 
breaking that mold, you never know what you're going to find. And you now you're combining the way that you're cooking and growing and canning and preserving and freezing and drying and whatever else. Like you've, you've just, you've unlocked a whole new world behind your garden. Mm-hmm. And we had a listener last year, they sent us a photo, which if you'd like for to share a photo on Backyard Gardens TV, Instagram, just send it to us. And um, they had their entire pantry filled to the brim with canned goods that they had done. And I mean, shout out to them because it is a lot of work. Yeah. But what I've found, I I unlocked it last year. My son, um, my wife went to go put my son to bed and I was like, all right, I'm going to go in there. And I had like, you know, four or five quarts of green beans I needed to can because I I can primarily tomatoes and green beans out of my garden, other things as well. But those are like the bulk of it. Mm -hmm. And I found it to be like, there was something about like the kids in bed the house is quiet. Mm-hmm. I'm going to sit here and I'm going to can this. Mm-hmm. And it was relaxing. It's work. But I also get brownie points too because I have to clean the kitchen at the yeah. same time yeah. because it has to be like a, a sterile. I'm using air quotes for sterile environment. So I do get brownie points for that. But it really worked out for me. And I, what I was dreading, I ended up falling back in love with at that mm-hmm. moment. Mm-hmm. Because I found a time to do it, like a real, a legit, like, okay, this is what I like to do. There's, so. um, it also puts you in a head space where you start to figure out different ways to, um, to use your vegetables, use your harvest, right? I remember, and so I think 2018 maybe was the first year I canned anything. And no doubt it probably was pickles. And I think I did cowboy candy. And I think I did the same thing in 2019. And then in 2020, I went all in, right? I started canning all kinds of things. And that year, as the garden season had started, I was like studying. And you can find on the Amazon list, you know, if you check the show notes, our Amazon list, we have these um, various pre- uh, preservation books and I was scanning the studying them reading them in the morning when I got up looking for recipes that I thought I might be interested in and the great part is there's always going to be a new recipe where you're like oh I want to try that right but in 2022 excuse me 2021 when I started canning last year I kind of had a base right I knew what I had in I knew the ease of canning some things I knew what I enjoyed Right. You know, and so I didn't study as much. Right. Like I had kind of a groove of what I wanted to can in 2021. And this year I'll be even further ahead. Right. And because what ends up happening now is I was better able to plan this year's garden based on what I want to preserve based on these last two years of trying to really get my feet in. Um, and I know that this clock kind of starts over again when I move on to preserving and specifically um, pressure canning. And that's actually an excitement to me because I have, you told me this two years ago, there's going to be a point where it's like you want to preserve other foods, but you're limited because it's not deemed safe for the methods you want to use. And I don't want to freeze everything. Right. So, right. Yeah. And I forgot to say one other thing that I lean very heavily is I, I love to can my own jalapenos. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, they're, 200 times hotter than what comes from the grocery store. Um, there's nothing worse than going. We just did a, um, a Cub Scout camp out and um, I'm the cook at the Cub Scout camp out. So I made the menu plan. I was like, you know, let's have tacos tonight. Let's live on the edge. Super tight budget for a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Right. So I was like, all right. And a lot of the adults, you know, we live in the South. A lot of people like spicy food. So I bought jalapenos. Man, it said I got there. And we're in the woods now. There ain't no going back at this point. And it shit said tamed jalapenos. And oh, I was like, oh, no. sorry. So we just eating some peppers. We might as well just be eating some vinegar bell peppers at this point. I was pissed. But, you know, you you find these things that you're just, you love to can and have on board. And, you know, I was talking to a, an old timer. I think he was in his 70s. And uh, he had a garden. And he, I was like, yeah, I was like he grew a lot of peppers and I was like, well, do you can them? He's like, nah, that's a dollar at the store for them shit. I don't grow it. I don't can it. It ain't no good. And I said, yeah, man. So I, I brought him a can of my peppers and I said, here, I was like, have take this home and eat it. You know, I was like, and you know what? You can keep the can. Mm-hmm. Usually I say, bring the jar back mm-hmm. the can. I like, just keep it. I saw him like a month later and he's like, man, 
I took all my pepper plants and I canned every last one of them <laughs> shits because it was better than anything I ever had. It was nice and hot. And I mean, you know, he he went to getting graphics like it burned my butt and everything. It was just what I was looking for. So, you know, it was one of those things where he had grown. He had a whole pepper farm, basically. That's all he grew mm-hmm, was all, mm-hmm. basically peppers. And it ignited this passion inside of him now where he could grow it. And he said he ended up doubling his garden size the next year in order to do this. So not only that, so this year what I'm trying to do too is I'm going to grow my peppers, but I'm also going to dry them and grind them as a pepper powder. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because I said before um, last year, a friend and listener of the show sent me a couple bags of peppers and one of them was he had ground some up and sent them. Mm -hmm. Man, it was so good because I could I could sprinkle it on my food and get the heat, but not the flavor. And that's something I'm always chasing. That's why I don't really like hot sauces that much because yeah. a lot of time it's like intrusive on the flavor of mm-hmm. the food. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I just want heat. Yeah. Don't ask most me why I want I heat. I can't answer that question. Most times I just question. don't want heat and that it can be intrusive almost. It's distracting from whatever yeah. the flavor is. Um, and real quick, do you water bath can or do you pressure can your peppers? Water bath. Okay. Uh, yeah. And I'm sure it's a real simple recipe, but... Um, Vinegar and water. Yeah. Do you do equal parts? Uh, so truth be told, I don't remember yeah. every year yep. I go back to P. Allen Smith and watch this one video he did where it's like three minutes and it wasn't even by him. It's by like village people or something or, you know, the, I don't know what website it was, but I watch it every year because it's like a three minute video that's super simple. And he's like, this is how I do it. And every year I do the same thing. I think it's like one to th- three to one ratio water to vinegar. I can't remember. I think I may have found the video because I asked because um, I love, love, love canned jalapeno peppers. Love, love, love them. And I, I feel like my peppers are too vinegary. Yeah. And so I'm going to watch this, uh, uh, P. Allen Smith video to see if it's different. The method that he's using as far as measurements are different. That's actually and the reason why it was one of the first things I can behind, um, you know, the, the pickles was it was so easy to do. Yeah. You know, it's not complicated. Um, so, so yeah, anyway. Um, you know why I keep shouting out P. Allen Smith? Because you love him. One day he's going to reach out. And I'm going to fanboy over him and probably cry because he's my hero. (laughs) He's my gardening hero. So just so you know. But no, I mean, seriously, it's just it's an easy recipe. And it's like you said, it's just it's simple to do, but it makes such an impact. You know, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I I know that canning, you know, buying a jar of peppers is a dollar. But once I did it and I was like, oh, well, this is the true form of a jalapeno. Mm -hmm. It was as game over. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. My very favorite is the and my dream and and it may not come to fruition this year, but it will one day. My favorite is um, the recipe on Ball's website is home style jalapenos. Um, And it includes um peppers jalapeno peppers um carrots and onions and it's my absolute favorite i i am like in tears with happiness every time i open the jar and so yeah. that's that's the way that i prefer to can them and then there's that whole idea again of the sizes you normally can them in so you'll you'll figure that out for yourself as far as the audience goes if you are new to canning that particular thing because it's going to vary every time. Like I think the 16 ounce jar is about right for me. If I go any larger then you know, they're kind of sitting in the refrigerator because I forget about them. Yeah. I don't do the big giant jar. I can, man, I can never remember the size of the jars. What's the big one? Um, 32 ounce is probably the largest that is kind of canning safe, which That's is a quart. Yeah. quart. yeah. And 16 I, ounces. I don't do a, a lot of, I don't do a lot of stuff in quarts, to be honest. You know, we'll do pickles and green beans, but that's mm-hmm. and tomatoes. That's about all we do in quarts. Everything mm-hmm. else is the pints, I believe it's called. Yeah, which is a sixteen so, ounce. I call them small, medium, large, and then jam jars. So I forgot I had this milk, and it's been sitting here for an hour. I'm going to go ahead and pass. Yeah, don't do that. 
So look, everybody, if it w- I would be remiss if we didn't sit here and talk to you about consuming food, if I didn't give you something like that. And if you're new to the show, every episode, every Thursday, we give you a recipe of the day. If you guys want some Backyard Gardens gear, go to the link below and check out our t-shirts, mugs, pint glasses, and other gear. All purchases go towards helping to support the show, so thank you so much in advance, and we hope you enjoy. We want you to be a part of our gardening community. DM us a picture of your garden at Backyard Gardens TV on Instagram, and we will share it with our listeners. All right, so if you remember back to the beginning of the show, way back in the day, um, and I mean this episode, we started at the bottom, and the bottom was raw, so I'm going to give you a raw recipe. Yeah. Oh, um, baby, I like it raw. Yeah, yes. baby, I like it raw. Yes, thank you. <laughs> I needed that in my day. Thank you. So I'm going to tell you how to make popsicles. It's summertime. It's hot. They're They're wonderful. And we started simple and then we worked our way up. So I'm going to give you the simple and then you can work your way up. And it's all you need is watermelon, an ice cube tray. You can use toothpicks. You can use popsicle sticks. You could get the popsicle holders if you'd like, but you just grind up the watermelon. And then we like to put a little squirt of honey in it. And then you can line it with some kind of plastic or you could even use like a tin foil if you want to be sustainable and then reuse that tin foil. You cover it and then poke your your holding device into it. You could be a toothpick or whatever, and that'll keep it sturdy and stick it in the freezer. So we did that and then we moved and this took the same recipe and then we would add mint to it. Mm -hmm. So you can do that. We've added basil to it before, a little bit of basil, and that was good. Then we moved on to strawberries. We've done blueberries, raspberries, anything like that. You don't even have to, you know, you really don't even have to put the honey in it because a lot of times the fruit, especially if you're harvesting it yourself, is already sweet enough. And you're saving the money because you can go to the store and buy, air quote, raw popsicles which (laughs) they aren't just strawberries if you look at the ingredients it's got something else in it Mm -hmm. and you can do it for a fraction of the cost i think i just bought a full-blown watermelon for that camp out that was three dollars and 86 cents so if i took a watermelon for three dollars i could make probably 50 or 60 popsicles yeah and you could do that and it's super simple Um, we've done bananas before, didn't work out the way we wanted to, but we've definitely done peaches and plums, anything like that. And at this point you can just start to get kind of creative with it. Don't be afraid to put a pinch of salt in to give it a little bit of bite. And when I say a pinch, I mean a pinch, not much. So, um, any of your, your herbs that you grow, you can do that. Mint is always going to be a good place to start because it just gives you that flavor. We've done, um, you I've seen recipes using sage, so you can do that. But then also, like with your cayenne peppers, if you've dried them and grind them up, a lot of times for adults, you can do like a sweet and hot type deal. So that's good. It's kind of like, have you had um, the uh, hot pepper chocolate bars? Have you ever had that? No. So that's a thing now, and I'm sure it's been a thing for a long time, but it's the sweet heat. That, you know, it actually, it's actually pretty good. I was surprised. So you can get crazy with that. But yeah, super simple, man. It doesn't take much. And that's the thing. The reason why I gave that recipe today is because I wanted to highlight that it's, it's not hard to transform your food and use it in a different way. Sometimes it's easier than the original way that you would use it to eat. It's uh, probably a pretty cool recipe to either make with kids maybe messy i don't know or definitely i'm sure kids would enjoy it we're getting to the end of the uh summer pretty soon so all of those final birthday parties and such go ahead yeah. come up. And, and the thing is is you're getting all your cantaloupes right now you're getting your watermelons you're getting what else can we be getting out of our gardens that is like sweet i don't know off the top of my head <laughs> <laughs> but anyways you get the drift mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. uh go make some popsicles and enjoy them yeah but Seriously, the whole thing about this is now that we're after the harvest, it's I think it's about 
ex, you know, expanding your horizons mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and learning different techniques. And I didn't want this show to be all about preserving, but it, I really, and I think I can speak for both of us, and if I'm not, correct me, but I think it's a very important part of this subject. Yeah, so much so where it almost seems like, well, of course it is. But again, as we open the show, the series, I should say, going back two episodes, um, it's just not something that's commonly talked about. And that oftentimes leads me to believe that there are some question marks for gardeners around it, you know. And if that's the case, then we're going to talk about it. Yeah, but you know, there is a lot of people and, you know, if you follow us on Instagram, um, hit us up and let us know if you can. But, you know, there's a lot of our listeners that do can. So Mm -hmm. my my hope, let me not even say can, preserve. My hope is that this would kind of spur somebody to maybe dip their toes in a little bit more and really broaden their horizons and use that produce for something else. Because you never know, you might have something you don't like and then end up planting more of it just for this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Here, here. So on that note. If you'd like to support the show, check us out on Patreon. Check us out on YouTube. We'd love to have you. Check out both of our YouTubes, Backyard Gardens TV and Be Better Garden. We would love to see you there. And um, leave us a like, comment, subscribe, all that good, good junk. And until then, see ya. We hope you enjoyed today's show. Please follow us on YouTube at Backyard Gardens TV. Instagram at Backyard Gardens TV. Over on our website, BackyardGardensTV.com. And then we have Patreon at Backyard Gardens. And don't forget to check out our links below to help the show. Thank you so much for joining us as we learn to grow and grow for change. Cut. Now you know why people feel like celebrating at harvest time. All over the world, people have feasting and good times when the crops have been gathered in. Hey, everybody. Thanks for checking out the Backyard Gardens podcast. If you like what we're doing and you want to continue to support the podcast, head over to our Patreon page to sign up. You can also make a one-time donation using PayPal. Both of these links are in the description. With your support, we can continue growing and helping others in their gardens. See ya. If you guys want some Backyard Gardens gear, go to the link below and check out our t-shirts, mugs, pint glasses, and other gear. All purchases go towards helping to support the show, so thank you so much in advance, and we hope you enjoy. We want everybody to have a garden, and we're going to give you a chance to win free seeds every month. Head over to BackyardGardensTV.com and enter your email address to be entered in all of our giveaways. Good luck! We want you to be a part of our gardening community. DM us a picture of your garden at Backyard Gardens TV on Instagram, and we will share it with our listeners.